Pretty much since we got the Apple Magic Keyboard case, I've been using it with my iPad Pro, but after the massive disappointment that iPadOS 15 was, I realized that Apple is always going to basically look at the iPad as not much more than that. It's just an iPad. So I've started considering using my iPad more so as just a tablet and not so much a laptop anymore. And for about three weeks, I've gone back to just using it as a tablet without a keyboard, without a trackpad, and just using the typical smart folio cover and I definitely have some thoughts after using it as a laptop two-in-one and now converting it back to just a tablet here's what I discovered let's begin First of all, something that I think the Magic Keyboard case got me very comfortable with very quickly was how heavy the iPad Pro can be. There's not really much Apple can do about this, unfortunately, because the 2018 iPad Pro was already pretty dang light for the size out of all the 13-inch multi-touch displays out there. This is pretty much as thin and light as you can get, almost too thin because it's more prone to bending and there's a lot of people that want it to be thicker or at least more structural on the inside so that it doesn't bend as easily and the mini LED iPad Pros are even heavier but in order to make that perfect weight balancing act work with the Magic Keyboard case this has to be kind of chonk it has to be pretty heavy which means that when you're all folded up and trying to throw this in a bag or trying to go on vacation with it it takes up a lot of dang weight it definitely feels heavier than a MacBook Air and it's certainly thicker so it suddenly takes away the whole the iPad Pro is this really thin really futuristic light thing because it's just kind of wrapped in in this silicone that collects a lot of oil in grease and the smart folio is guilty of that as well but it adds very little weight to the overall product whereas the magic keyboard case made my iPad feel like a brick now going back to just using it as a tablet it feels really light and easy to throw in a bag and it doesn't feel very difficult to hold with the case and using it in portrait mode obviously doing everything with the touchscreen and not having a mouse to worry about anymore just interacting on a more personal level because you just directly touch and close and swipe exactly with what you want to interact with instead of with a little trackpad below the display. I don't know how else to describe this, but I think giving the iPad a magic keyboard case makes it feel bigger, maybe because the software doesn't have to show a virtual keyboard, and since you're typing on physical keys and you have a trackpad, you feel like you're almost never covering up the software you're interacting with. So some may see that as a pro or a con, but using it just with my hands, it actually feels a bit more intimate, a bit smaller, feels closer closer in interaction with my iPhone than it does in interaction with a laptop or an iMac like I use for work every single day. So basically, I feel closer to the operating system, and it feels more mobile to not have the keyboard case with me all the time. But it's not all fairies and roses. It's not like everything is now great and I've decided the Magic Keyboard case sucks. I must say, after FaceTiming my parents several times and using my iPad for its intended purpose, which is watching TV shows, that's what all of this hard work and engineering went into, not being able to adjust the angle of viewing content and pretty much just having one angle to work with with the smart folio case, yeah, this does kind of suck. It is a bit of a bummer. And that's by far, I think, what I've missed the most about the Magic Keyboard case is just being able to have so much variety in how you want the iPad to stand and pivot. So yeah, it's kind of clunky and it's very heavy to bring around with you and it adds a lot of thickness and weight to the iPad, but once it's planted and once it's in its place, it's actually actually really really convenient that it's a floating design so being able to detach it from the keyboard case is a lot easier particularly than the smart folio which I don't believe is meant to be taken off as regularly because for one there's no floating design and you kind of have to peel into the crevice there a little bit to detach it so I don't find myself pulling this off as regularly as the magic keyboard case because again no floating design but just having that variety of angles so that if I'm lying in bed and I want the iPad pointed a bit more towards my face I can just pivot it more downwards or if I'm wanting to use it more like a laptop and have it sitting in my lap I can pivot it upwards a bit. The range of motion the keyboard case offers is pretty limited overall but I think this is just approaching the limit as to how far back I want the iPad to go and I must say one of the coolest features that I really appreciated the Magic Keyboard case for is making sure it had the smart connector support that could also charge the iPad itself so the use case I found myself using a lot with this was just leaving it 
on my desk. Because it's so heavy and so clunky, I didn't really want to take it into different rooms of the house or on the couch or anything. So I would leave it plugged in via the USB-C port and I would use my iPad as an iPad if I wanted to take it outside of the office. But honestly, that wasn't too often. So what I mostly used it for was just an extremely expensive overkill inductive charger. Basically, if I needed my iPad to charge, I would drop it magnetically on the Magic Keyboard case and it would start charging. Kind of wireless charging in a way. If you're the type of person to just leave this plugged in all the time, there's no battery to worry about in this setup, so it's fine. And then when you're ready to take the iPad on the go, you just pick it up and it stops charging. So it kind of felt like a wireless charging experience given I didn't really have to interact with a cable that much. But of course, there were those times where you wanted that viewing angle variety, but you were on the bed or on the couch or whatever. So there were those occasional moments where I would have to interact with a cable and disconnect it and then go back to hogging around this giant iPad keyboard case. And I actually recently played around with the 11 inch Magic Keyboard case, which I do think is pretty crammed. It's not a full size keyboard and I'm sure it helps with the weight problem a little bit, but it definitely feels a bit more tight when you're typing. So the funny thing about this whole experience is that my favorite aspects of the Magic Keyboard case have nothing to do with the keyboard and trackpad. Going back, watching my old reviews of the Magic Keyboard case and the unboxings and everything, I really was willing to drop an unhealthy amount of money on this case simply because I thought that maybe Final Cut or Logic or Xcode, you know, pro applications or more Mac OS like features were just around the corner and were probably going to launch with the iPad OS 14 update. And then that didn't happen. So then we got the M1 iPad Pros. We got 8 and 16 gigs of RAM. We've got the keyboard case now. Now I was like, okay, iPad OS 15, this has to be the big one. This is where we get pro applications. This is where we get pro res support, external webcam supports, maybe some more Mac OS like features. Or if I had it my way, straight up dual booting Mac OS options. And that didn't really happen. iPad OS 15 just essentially became even more like iOS and confused the whole separation of iOS from iPad OS for me even more. And that's just made me rethink how I use my iPad and how long I'm going to end up keeping it. Because the hardware is so limited by the software, I don't really see a great reason to upgrade to the iPad Pros for the foreseeable future. So I am likely going to hold on to this 2018 iPad Pro until it stops getting software updates unless they somehow miraculously find a really cool hardware feature that I feel like I can't live without. Mini LED is great, center stage is awesome, and having overkill and tons of overhead with the M1 chip performance is nice, but to me, it's not worth the overall cost of having to drop $1,100, and that's just for the 128 gig option. And I am very grateful that I can use my old keyboard case with that one, but I think that having such an expensive, bulky case that is restricted to one iPad size, obviously, was making me feel like in the future, I can only get 12.9 inch iPads. So if they do decide to make a 16 inch iPad Pro, this is suddenly going to become useless. Or if I decide in the future, maybe I want to try the 11 inch iPad Pro. If I'm not going to treat the iPad as a laptop anymore and Apple doesn't want it to be a true two in one, then I might go back to the 11 inch form factor because when I reviewed that last year, I thought it was pretty comfortable and kind of nice. Then I realized the only reason I wasn't willing to switch to the 11 inch iPad Pro was simply because I had spent so much money on this stupid case, which has some nifty features. And overall, it was one of my favorite Apple products of the year, but it was kind of all dependent on the iPad becoming more. And I feel like it really hasn't. So now I kind of want to detach myself from using the keyboard case. I'd like to sell it or give it to someone who's going to have better use of it, particularly in my personal life. And that would allow me to feel more freedom because I could know it's all right if I go with an 11 inch iPad Pro. I'm not stuck with some expensive keyboard case that's only going to work with a particular size. So that's why I'm kind of giving up on Magic Keyboard case, going back into using the iPad as an iPad and trying to live with the Smart Folio cover, which does limit the viewing angles quite a bit, but it does let the iPad be a lot lighter. And the other big reason I'm trying to get used to having the Smart Folio cover is once Universal Control comes out for Mac OS Monterey, I'll be able to control my iMac Pro and my iPad Pro with the same keyboard and mouse, making having, you know, the Space Gray Magic Keyboard with numeric keypad and the magic keyboard on my desk kind of redundant. This whole keyboard and trackpad thing becomes a little unnecessary. And I really do love the inductive charging method and I love that this has USB-C on the side so I can charge the iPad from the left or the right but because I spend a lot of my time using my iPad at my desk I realized it's probably a lot easier to just move the USB-C cable from the left to the right and 
it's not inductive i still have to interact with the cable but over the past few weeks the usb-c cable just kind of rests right on my desk and hasn't been too hard to just keep it there plug it in when it needs to charge and unplug it when it's at 100 percent so i'm excited for universal control because i think having just one keyboard and mouse to control everything sounds super futuristic and kind of iron man-esque and in the future if i want to try different sizes i don't want to be restricted by the keyboard case i chose and i definitely don't want to buy another magic keyboard case pretty sure this is going to be the only time i'm comfortable dropping you know hundreds of dollars on a one size case so i'm curious how you guys feel about your magic keyboard cases after a few years of use and how many of you are still comfortable just using the standard smart folio cover and are happy just living with this both cases are pretty expensive to be honest with you so hopefully apple can find ways of making those cheaper in the future like a hundred dollars for, you know, some magnets. Feel free to let me know how you guys feel about it. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.